Uh, welcome back from our little brief break, and I uh, want to introduce Janine Alesh from the uh, Associate Professor of French at Salt Lake Community College. And of course, that's what she means by the other UT, not the University of Texas. So uh, Janine, it, the floor is yours. Hey, thank you very much. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you everyone for organizing it and for being here. I am coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah, you know, the other UT. So as the name of the presentation suggests, we made the move to Francais Antifactique from the University of Texas at Austin last year. Um, we started using it in our face-to-face -face courses, and we also wanted to create an online course using the materials. And this presentation is about the online course. Um, my goal today is to introduce you to the course and I hope also to encourage you to explore the resource. Um, I posted a pre-Quality Matters version on the Canvas Commons for people to take a look at. And I hope to have a more final version, you know, I'm coming up before too, too long. And my more aspirational goal is to um, provide a foundation for a community of users who will adopt and adapt the course and who will improve it and update it for themselves and for everyone else. Um, so here we go. Oops, the slide didn't advance. This is bad. Here we are. <laughs> A big shout out to Team Techs, Salt Lake Community College version. Um, you know, the e-learning office at the college was just um, so important in getting this project going. Um, Matt Wilson and Jessamy Lake are both employees over there, and they had permission to devote huge amounts of their time to this course. This is one of the most labor intensive courses that eLearning had ever done. They also provided a stipend, which enabled us to pay my amazing colleague, Laura Nelson, um, a, um, a stipend. At least she got some, some bucks for her large, uh, her significant efforts here and she teaches a concurrent enrollment version of this course. Um, here are some goals we had for the course, and uh, you can just take a look at that. I'd just like to say we used every bit of Francais Interactif in this course. It's all integrated, the self-correcting exercises, the grammar presentations, the videos, all of it's in here. Testing materials are used, but we also needed to do a lot of supplementing you know, the same way you do for any course, a face-to-face -face course also, and any textbook. I've always supplemented the, the materials. Just a little overview of how the course is organized. Um, each chapter is divided into three modules. Oddly, chapter three is divided into two. That's the only exception. And every module includes these materials. Um, it starts off on page one with a downloadable sheet of can-do statements and learning objectives. Um, every module includes the text exercises, tons of low stakes Canvas activities, grammar videos, vocabulary, pronunciation, everything that you expect to see in a, any course, any language course. Uh, it, it, um, every module ends with a reflective self-assessment based on the can-do statements. So it really ties in um, really neatly. And there's also a Quizlet practice for the vocabulary. We put, used chapters one through six for, um, I'm sorry, for the first semester of French. And every chapter includes these items. There are class discussions. It could be in French or English, depending on you know, the topic, what's going on. There are more substantial, more open-ended reading, writing, um, speaking activities. There are always cultural materials, um, especially early on. They're, they might be more in English pretty quickly. They become English and French or all French. And there's a written cultural reflection, which students do in English. There's a, an oral language comparison that students do. And that turned out to be a really wonderful assignment. We have a Duolingo assignment, um, three of the chapters end with an online exam, and three of the chapters end with a multi-part scaffolding final project. So here were, um, again, our goals in creating this course, a lot of scaffolding, a lot of supplementing, and fostering competence in all skill areas. And we were especially, we, we wanted to pay, pay special attention to speaking and listening, which seemed like the skills that are, are perhaps most difficult to 
foster and assess in an online environment. So this um, presentation is just a series of snips from the course. So it's a pretty unfriendly PowerPoint. It's too much text. Um, but just to give you an idea, I've tried to use these little orange boxes to sort of um, indicate why I'm showing you this. And here's our very um, introduction from chapter 00, which is what it's also called in the textbook. And we're, we're getting them ready to watch this first video. You know, this is a course, it's first semester French. It's for people with zero knowledge of French. And I'm asking them to watch a video. And in a face-to-face -face class, I would tell them, I know you don't know French, but we're gonna watch this anyway. So that's what I do here. I try to make it a real familiar tone, low key, low stakes, a lot of reassurance. Sorry, go on. The next page, and notice that there are a lot of short pages. Each module is built of short pages, sort of to you know, encourage that kind of pacing, get them coming back to the video. Hey, let's watch it again. Can you, I bet you heard these names. I bet you recognize the city names. And they did, except when passes gave some of them trouble. <laughs> On the following page, there's a little quiz where again, they get to show what they understood or didn't understand from this video. Here we end with this um, for the, that same video. And we just say, hey, you know, I bet you didn't know that you were je m'appelle. If you're a true novice, if you never had any French, you don't know what that means, but you do know what it means at the same time. You guessed, and that's perfect. You know, get them used to this. Um, you're supposed to, making educated guesses is good. A lot of sound files um, in this course. That was a very labor intensive part for the designer. Again, another preface for uh, a video. This is from chapter two. You know, here's some of the terms you're gonna hear. Oh, and by the way, here's some pictures. And the pictures are all from Creative Commons or Pixabay. And here they watch the video about Blake. And we end at the um, bottom of the page with a very rapide, a verification is a quiz, huh? it's a quick quiz, a very rapide, you know, what is Blake like? All of the grammar points are prefaced with a video. This is something that we had in our, our a commercially produced textbook that really enabled us to flip the class, which I love. And I wanted to reproduce that for the online OER resource also. So here's a video, it's six minutes, like, hey, let's talk about infinitives and conjugation. And you notice we're using EL in here also. Here's another way we work with the videos. You'll see at the bit top, there's a picture, a little introduction to a vocab word they're gonna hear. And at the left, we have Frank. And this is the video from Francais Interactive. And at the right, we have my video where I say, hey, let's listen to Frank again. I'm gonna ask you some questions and you're gonna answer them. And I want you to answer them with whole sentences. So I really walk them through. This is what you're doing. This is what you should be hearing. And this is how you're gonna work with this. And then you go on and they start doing it themselves. And you're seeing that we're asking them for oral responses. Um, so that's the end of the first part, pretty quick. Let's see, I'm not doing too bad on time. And another big goal for us was introducing a lot of authentic cultural materials and creating some student research opportunities. And it's little r research. You know, I want students to start thinking right away that they can use French language websites and gather meaningful information, even though there's a lot they're not gonna understand. There's still videos, there are images, you know, there are words that they'll be able to pick up pretty quickly. And I want them to get really used to that idea. Um, so here at the top, you'll see we have the interpretive icon. Um, we use these icons from the proficiency benchmarks and the can-do statements to talk about the kind of linguistic task they're engaging in. Again, little orange box. You're gonna read this text and don't worry about understanding every word. And this is why, <laughs> again, that sort of you know, don't, don't panic. Um, and if you look at the text, it is super accessible. It's where is French spoken and they can recognize the names of these countries. We also really wanted to um, emphasize French as a world language. This is a, an exercise that comes just slightly later. 
And we have the self-assessment connection. It's a little gray button that students would click on. And again, it really outlines how this fits into their learning. They just finished our quality matters review um, like on Monday, and we got a score of 98 out of 100. So we're pretty, yay, good us. <laughs> we feel pretty good about that. And that's a thanks to a lot of these features. But here they're doing that little R research. They're looking at French language sites, finding out this information. And obviously the point of the exercise, one of the points is adjective agreement. And then they're, they're asked to reproduce these, you know, formulaic sentences. A video about how to use, how to get French language websites. Another thing we introduced was this new or revised uh, food pyramid. A lot of new vocabulary in here, you know, processed foods is now, you know, important vocab that, the kind of vocab that we're introduced to talk about diets meaningfully you know, today, today's world. We try to keep the resources in Canvas so the students don't go off and wander, but some of them lead outside. And this is a source. This is in uh, chapter six on the city uh, modes of transportation, bringing in environmental issues. And again, really very much in a way they can understand. And there's both the text and the video. Um, chapter six, again, about cities. The first module focuses on Paris. The second module focuses on Montreal. And the third module focuses on Abidjan. And as part of that, we talk about cassava. And there's a series of um, materials. There's some short text. There's a couple of videos talking about cassava. And that's, um, so that's it brings us to the third part. We really wanted to start integrating some college level student learning outcomes. And this is as much for our colleagues as it is for our students. A lot of our colleagues took languages um, that taught in a very old fashioned way. And we just need to be more integrated with the bigger picture here at the college. So we really started um, bringing that in and trying to make it super visible in this course. Again, we have the icons. And every assignment comes up with the what, why, how. So here's the what, and this is for the first text exercise, 1.1. You know, at the left, you see it's super bland. This is a self-correcting exercise, do it. <laughs> and then you look at the right and you say, hey, well, but what we're really doing also is we're building, you know, critical thinking skills. We're taking a piece of information and we're applying it creatively to different contexts. Here we're in the why, again, coming back at the critical thinking skills, you know, and um, recombining learned elements uh, correctly and creatively. That's what we do as experts. And then how, they need to take a screenshot of their results and upload it. And that ties into the computer literacy that we also expect them to get. They have to have it and they also have to develop it um, in this course. And I've decided that even asking for help, I said, this is a skill that we need you know, to identify where we're stuck. This is for chapter zero, zero, where they have a discussion. Um, again, articulating, um, synthesizing and articulating ideas as a valuable activity, you know, something that enhances and improves our thinking. And again, if you look at the second little orange box here, putting our capacity for observation, and contributing to a community. I think these are lovely outcomes. Here we are, cultural reflection, chapter zero, zero. Again, getting used to using materials in French, even though we're novice speakers at this time. Um, increasing our capacity for deep listening and empathy. Um, these are important skills. People can think of them as soft skills, and I don't see them as necessarily so soft. Here's something um, from chapter one. Oh, this is when they're looking at um, they're looking at some French language websites to learn about holidays and other parts of the French speaking world, you know, and to get them like, what kind of website am I looking at? Is it a site for a tourist business? Is it a government website with a school calendar? Is it a religious website? Is 
And here we're getting a computer literacy. Again, you don't have to be marketing professional, but you want it to look nice. And again, if, you know, using information responsibly, honoring the sources that give us information. The college learning outcomes really come through here in the ePortfolio assignment at the end. Students curate work they've already done through the semester, and then they reflect on how does it show these that they've acquired or that they're able to, um, or how they demonstrate these skills. Social justice, very important to us. You know, just talking about how do we talk about race? How do we talk about ethnicity? I see I'm at time, my timer went off. <laughs> you know, we put this in a French context and um, but also we want to empower students to articulate their identity in a way that feels good and authentic to them. This video is in English. A couple of readings, opening a window for talking about Black Lives Matter. You know, and again, a lot of these materials will have to be updated in five years, this will look different. Mm -hmm. um, we have one, a beautiful exercise on stereotypes, you know, fostering society, societal change for the better. That needs some work, but it's a good, it's a good start. Mm -hmm. And again, with a reference to the Ivory Coast, you know, being aware of the how problematic space is. And here's a, you know, and another shout out to Francais Interactique. This is the activity is exactly from them. We just popped it into Abidjan because they're using Google Maps to explore the city. <laughs> so I welcome all sorts of feedback, and here's my contact information. If you're in Salt Lake City, we'll go to Ruth's Diner and talk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Janine. This is a terrific example of building on somebody else's work. Kind of, uh, <laughs> it reminds me of what they were saying in the previous talk from Franklin Marshall's team about reusing. Um, really, I'm so excited to, to see how you've extended French Interact, Francie Interactif, and taken it in your own direction, adapted it to your, uh, really gone beyond what was in the original. And um, so it's just a really excellent concrete example of the power of OER. We, when we started Francie Interactif years ago, people would come back and say, oh, we need more information about la francophonie because it's so focused on Lyon. Yeah. And I would say, well, why don't you do that? <laughs> In other words, we were hoping to prompt, we were hoping to prompt exactly what you were doing. So people join forces and start sharing their content and then getting creative and adapting it to their, because we don't know the students at Salt Lake City Community College, but you do. Just really, really terrific. Thank you so much for all this. Um, Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so it's very, very inspiring. And um, I also really love how you've adapted um, because it was it was made so long ago in some respects. We need to, we're, we're looking at our own content thinking we, this needs to be updated. Um, and I like how you've, uh, you know, put in can-do statements. I like how you've taught, talk to you, you frame it in terms of then the different kinds of linguistic uh, categories that ACTL has given to us, so prof uh, presentational discourse as well as interpretive discourse. So all of those really update it and move it forward. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna say thanks for, to Janine. It was a terrific talk. And um, these 15 minute talks go by so fast, but I hope that has whetted people's appetites for what you can do with uh, an, an existing GOE OER, really go beyond what the original was. This is a great example of a, a talking about it in terms of der derivation. It's a derivative of the original. So thank you.